afternoon, and we welcome you to Penn Center's 32nd Annual Heritage Day celebration. Uh, this is the opening ceremony and Founders Day memorial service. My name is Carrie Major, and I hail right here from St. Helena.
you may be seated, why don't we give Pastor Williams a round of applause. Thank you for that welcome. Again, we need to kind of loosen up today. Um, today's a very joyful occasion um, that we're here. We're just so happy to be here. It's been 32 years since Ken has been planning uh, to put the heritage on so that we can remember our past and we can move on toward our future. We will now have, um, at this time, our interim executive director. It is my pleasure to present her, and also Queen Quet of the Gullah Gulli Geechee Seattle Coalition, who also serves this year as co-chair of the Heritage Day celebration. Put your hands together as they come forth to greet us. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Board and Trustees and its community we are honored that you will come and celebrate our 32nd annual Heritage Day celebration. We will always be grateful for the opportunity to promote the work and restore the environment and to increase our models and self-efficiency. As you enjoy these three days that the 20 14 Heritage Days Planning Committee has put together for you. We ask that you be responsible and we pray that as you leave this place, that you will find everything when you return home as you have left it, the place and secure. We welcome you to the Low Country and Historic Penn Center. We look forward to seeing you 2015 for the dates of November 12th through the 15th. You are welcome once. Commission will read right here in Beaufort County, South Carolina. First on Port Royal Island, then right here on Central Island on January 1st, 1866. But guess what? When are we there? The gun there, yeah. They're going to grind to these young grounds for London and things like that. And the English are there. So that's why plenty of hundred children will get you today. You come here and you say, well, what's going on? They say they're going to get you and things like that. But I know that's because most of them that attend the school here speak like this now, right? And so, you wonder, are they going? Are they Gigi? Are they any of the above? They're all of the above. They're bilingual and multilingual. And we celebrate all that happened in 1862 that promised 
the day that we're here for now to our ancestors, some of our elders that are still here to remember their great grandparents and grandparents telling them stories of what happened back of your end when they've been a dominant. That's how many generations of families were here at Penn as a school and later continue to work with it as Penn Community Services. So that's why our theme this year is Penn's promise, legacy, literacy, and land. Because it was always about the stand we took on the land. But then we have to protect that legacy. How do we do it? By making sure our children are literate. Making sure our children then read their story. Making sure they know our story so that they will be the next generation 152 years from today. Right up on these your ground, the shouting thing, and then they're going to know they be free so that people ain't going to have to ask them to in Sri Khan, you know. And they like that. So I was so happy on behalf of my entire Heritage Days planning committee for 2014 and on behalf of my co-chair, Dr. Valerie Jackson, our vice chair, Ernestine Atkins, our secretary, Ms. Gardenia White, who is actually right here, standing next to the children and used to be one of the children and tell one that's brought coming to Penn School, right? And so, we're so pleased she's still here working on these grounds with us, and we are especially pleased you're all here with us to celebrate. At the close of the ceremony, we will be going across the road to the Emory Campbell Cafeteria for the Taste of the Sea Islands. After the Taste of the Sea Islands, you're welcome to come back to Frizzell Hall, where we have the Road to Remembrance tonight. That'll be at 6 p.m. At 7 p.m., come down the road of Lee Peace, they're on the same side of the road, to Bethesda Christian Fellowship. We will have a traditional or old-fashioned prayer service, but it's really a traditional WBT prayer service. And then that ends at 8, and we'll be back here at the museum where you'll get to meet our artist of the year. That is her work, signed in Griffin Evans' work on the cover of your songbook today. And we're so proud that she is our artist of the year. We have surveys for you, and we also have a QR code. All the folks I see taking pictures of me with your smartphone, please make sure to keep that QR code in your souvenir journals and also over where the white tents are here. You can come get surveys from us because we'd like to know what you think of the celebration this year. And we have other literature that will give you all the dates of all the other activities we have coming up. We have Watch Night, a Gullah Geek Freedom Come play here December 20th, and we also have a Black and White Affair December 27th coming up here at Penn Center. November 21st and 22nd will be the Penn Center Civil Rights Symposium. And so we got plenty of things going on for Hunter Chiller, Yeti Mo, but who we be down here on these islands in the sea. And so I'm so honored that you have chosen to come out and celebrate with us. And pastors, as we say in church, they thought it not robbery, right? to be here with us today, and we find you all already a blessing in our celebration of Penn's promise, literacy, the legacy, literacy, and land. So keep on shouting on the land, y'all, and keep on taking a step. Peace and blessings. I enjoy doing quite every time she uh, speaks. Um, I also say honor and we're going to get Matt Jenkins, let's just give her a hand as she stands. I'm very proud to know this young woman. We're going to come a very long way. Um, I, I just, I'm just blended. I really am. Not only Linda, Billy Quack, and I'm an older person, y'all. Um, also, Attorney Bush, I'm just honored to be your friends. I just honor you guys to be so far. The Lord has been brought here and doing great things with you, and I want you guys to really continue the journey. Thank you all so very much. One other person as I turn, Ms. Victoria Smart. And these people whose name I'm calling came up through the ranks of some things that I've done in my past. And um, I just messed off of just seeing them to where they are.
Councilman McBride and the Beaufort County Council. It's such an honor. Everyone, please welcome Ms. Rydina Simmons White, who's a 10 school graduate, and she offers a 10 school prayer and lead us in a 10 school song. It's listed in your book. Thank you. 
52 years that this song and this prayer has been in existence, and we want the young people especially to learn and listen to the words because it has so much meaning. Oh God, give me clean hands, clean words, and clean thoughts. Help me to stand for the hard life against the easy wrong. Save me. to welcome our dignitaries from the Holy Tongue African Village in Sheldon as they offer a libation in our celebration. Thank you, sir. The final 
Friends of the Delaware Nation, the Sessura. This has been a long-standing uh, tradition for the Heritage Day celebration. Our children are in place, and we are delighted to have students from our very own St. Helena Elementary School, accompanied by the Learning Tree Preparatory School, all the way from Bronx, New York, to be our honorary flag bearers. Give them a hand as they come forth, and they will each explain to you. Yes. I am Zion. 
smart. I attend St. Helena Elementary School. The country I am representing is Belize. All right. My name is Saray Williams. I attend the Learning Tree Cultural Preparatory School in the Bronx, New York. The flag I am holding represents children. Yeah, yeah. I attend the Hamlet Elementary School. The country I am representing Botswana. Yeah. My name is Marcus Marinas. I attend the Lenin Cultural Preparatory School in New York. And the flag that I am carrying represents Nigeria. Johnson. I attend St. Helena Elementary School. The flag I'm representing is Brazil. My name is Brianna Key. I attend the Learning Key Cultural Cultural Preparatory School. The flag I'm holding represents Libya, North Africa. Thank you, Marsha. I attend St. Helena Elementary School. The flag I am representing is Burkina Faso. My name is Nadia. I attend the Renishi Cultural Preparatory School in Bronx, New York, and the flag that I am holding represents the country of Guinea and West Africa. My name is Alea Palai. I attend St. Hanna Elementary School. The country I'm representing is Cameroon.
Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire. Job well done. If you want more information about each of these countries, go to my right. The young people will go and place their flags there. Thank you so very much. Well done. Great job, y'all. Great job. Again, we thank our youth for providing us with the information and also the flags of the different countries. We will move forward as they're placing the flags. Um, we have a very special guest today on our program. Um, she's a newly appointed principal of the St. Helena Elementary School, and I know she's so very proud of her children that she sees here. Please give a warm welcome to Miss Sinfra Sinfonia. Sinfonia here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ms. Karen, and you said, yes, I am the principal of St. Helena Elementary. Actually, I taught there about 
off 13 years ago in the science class and it's just a little slack coming home and I'm glad to be home. Good afternoon, visitors and honored guests. As I reflect on this year's theme, Penn's Promise, Legacy, Literacy, and Land, my thoughts revolve around our children, more, specific, more specifically, the limitless potential that their futures hold. A future that is built on the foundation of their educational legacy that has been passed down to them from generations before them in the African American community. I am charging each of us to reflect upon these questions. Have the situations that our children face changed each day? Have circumstances improved for our children? Are things easier for our children than they were two decades ago? What are the major problems and challenges that our children and communities face? What is the outlook for the future of our children? When we think of the issues and challenges of violence, drugs, addiction, negative culture and media influences, and fractured families and communities that some of our children face each day, their futures can seem bleak. Many of these same issues and challenges were identified as serious problems more than a decade and a half ago. They continue to plague our community and make life an uphill struggle for many of our children. However, history has shown that education, traditional and non-traditional, is, is the prescription for change. Traditional education comes from schools. Non-traditional education comes from our community, our community leaders, our parents, our grandparents, and others who are involved in the day-to-day -day lives of our children and young people. Each of these individuals can impart knowledge of the legacy of illiteracy for education that has served as the cornerstone of success for our community. In order for this long ago form legacy to continue, it is absolutely necessary that the next step in the long path to improve the conditions for our youth is for them to have positive role models that they encounter every day. These models should have a positive, involved, and instructive impact in every child's life by talking to them, being involved in their lives, listening to them, supporting them, encouraging them, and teaching them right from wrong. They should have role models who very much believe that the hopes and the dreams of their future are anchored by a good education. Achieving this will require a meaningful collaboration among community organizations, leaders, parents, and the school. The outlook for the future of our children not only lies in their legacy, it lies in their present. A present that serves as an open door to the fulfillment of their legacy through literacy and reading. Their legacy says, reading means freedom. Reading means prosperity. Reading means power. Reading well is the gateway to success. The legacy of African Americans has shown that there is no other way. Everyone must be responsible for teaching our children to read and to become literate. Role models and community members must develop and enforce educational standards. Unless we all immediately address the issue of reading skills for our students, the legacy will have been in vain. Here are some ways to increase the literacy in our children and to encourage our children to read. Model reading. That means you read for knowledge, you read for self-improvement, and you read for the pleasure of reading. Read to very young children and have young children read to their brothers and sisters. Encourage our children to read for at least 30 minutes every day. Encourage our children to read to you every day. Encourage younger children to read rather than play video games or sports. Yes. Give books for birthdays, holidays, and other meaningful occasions. Ask your church to offer children's weekly reading classes and to encourage them to read church lessons on Sunday. Praise all children for reading well rather than engaging in other activities. Encourage your children to join a book club. Build a household library with books, newspapers, and magazines for our children. Reward our children for reading often and reading well. Organize reading parties or events with family members. 
Visit bookstores and libraries regularly with our children. Ensure that books in your children's school are up to date and relevant. Encourage your children to read and learn more than one language. Encourage your child in our enrolling your child in a free or low cost tutoring program. And ask every child that you meet, what have you read today? In closing, we can all make a difference for all children. We all want them to fulfill their legacy and be successful. We all want them to achieve. We all expect them to do their best. We all have high expectations for their future. We need to tap into the strength of their legacy, gain through education, and show them that we believe in them just as those who came before them believe in the brightness of their future. Thank you. talk about positive role models, and I was thinking, well, perhaps you might be preaching to the choir, mm -hmm. but the choir here can, um, did, you know, relay the message yes. to someone else, mm -hmm. so that they, too, can help our young um, people uh, raise their standards, especially through um, reading, and to talk about collaboration, and it does take a village to raise our children. Um, a lot of people think that it does, but it does. It takes every one of us sitting here to help our young folks. Thank you again. Give her another hand clap. Thank you so very much. And we look forward to working with you. Yes. Um, let us please welcome um, the Reverend, excuse me, I'm going ahead of myself. Um, today's program is dedicated to Penn School founders, Laura Town, Ellen Murray, and Charlotte Thornton. So we're going to welcome the Reverend Kevin Parcel of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Beaufort as he offers a tribute to Lower Town. Welcome him as he comes. On behalf of the members of the fellowship, I mean that it is a great honor and blessing to share this thread of connection to the last two and two years. where her social conscience was stirred by the anti-slavery sermons of William Henry Prince, calling for abolition. In 1861, the Union Navy captured Fort Royal Sound, surprising the cotton growers of the Sea Islands and causing them to leave behind not only their plantations, but also the people who had worked the land over the system of slavery. In what became known as the Fort Royal Experiment, Northern teachers, superintendents, and missionaries from various churches were called to the Sea Islands to help the previously enslaved people to create free lives. Laura Town was one of the first to respond to that call. In 1862, Laura met a compassionate teacher named Ellen Murray when she spoke to a large Quaker colony in Rhode Island where Ellen lived. And soon thereafter, at the age of 36, Lower Town came to St. Helena Island, followed by Ellen Murray, who became her lifelong companion. Confronting them were the obstacles of resentful Union troops, a difficult climate, threatening insects, and devastating epidemics. But Laura lost into war, bringing her spirit and her knowledge of medicine to the people of St. Helena. Soon realizing that education would be important, Tom and Murray began holding classes, first at the Oaks, and then because of the sheer numbers of students at Brick Baptist Church, until a new school was donated and shipped in sections in 1864. Laura Tom named the school Penn in honor of William Penn and the Pennsylvania's Freedmen's Aid Society who funded the school's first years. Later, her family, other prominent Unitarians, and abolitionists of other faiths supported the school, 
and Perry became the only school in South Carolina to provide secondary education to free men and women, eventually offering teacher training. Tom and Mary's friend and co-founder, Charlotte Forden, a free woman from the North, became an important African-American teacher. As racial distinctions did not include Tom and Mary's work or their friendships, Unique in my time and in this area, they regularly welcomed African American friends into their home. Laura Town became a bridge between the government and the people of the islands, advocating for their needs and their wages. She opposed speculators' attempts to buy land that had become delinquent through non-payment of taxes, eventually making it possible for people to own the land they had worked all their lives. Tom was a quiet revolutionary who broke social barriers. She attacked the assigned social place of African Americans by breaking deeply entrenched patterns of subservience and by supporting black people as they lived into their independence and leadership. Laura Town died of influenza in 1901 at the age of 75. Several hundred of her Sea Island neighbors followed the simple mule cart that carried her body to the Port Royal Ferry, singing the spirituals that she had so loved. She's buried in Philadelphia, although a memorial marker is placed here at Brick Church with the inscription, erected by the people of St. Helena, South Carolina, in memory of Laura M. Town entered into joy in 1901, the beloved and venerated teacher, friend, helper, and physician for 40 years. Let perpetual shine, light shine upon him. Although Laura Town did not write an autobiography, she kept a journal for a number of years and wrote to her family in the news. So the record of her work has neither been forgotten nor lost, but stands as a lesson of personal devotion to a noble cause. Her Unitarian understanding of the importance of social justice brought her here to live out her faith, but it was her love for the people of the island that kept her here until her dying days. We'll last on Ms. Ethel Sumter. A Ken Club president and a member of the Penn Center Board of Trustees. Also, Ms. Victoria Small, director of history, art and culture, who will pay tribute to Ellen Murray and after some who will pay tribute to Charlotte Thornton. Good afternoon, everyone. Charlotte Thornton arrived on St. Helena Island on October the 27th. 1862. She was the first African-American teacher at Penn School. Born in Philadelphia on August the 17th, 1837, she was the only child of Robert Bridges and Mary Virginia Woods Porton. The Portons were an upper middle class family. Charlotte's grandfather, James Porton, a free black, was a highly respected owner of a sail-making factory. Charlotte attended services at the Brick Baptist Church and daily wrote her feelings and impressions into letters and a diary that she kept. Charlotte taught at Penn School until May 1864 when due to ill health, she returned to Philadelphia. The Islanders were sad to see that brown gal leave as she had truly endeared herself to the people. She is honored on the historical marker at Penn School Historic District. In January 1993, a memorial marker was placed in her honor on the grounds of Brick Baptist Church. Owen Murray was also honored at Penn School for 40 years for dedicated service to the community. To this community. Born in Turkey of British missionary parents, Miss Murray was raised in Canada. Owen Murray's 
first meeting with Laura Taylor was in early 1862 when Miss Taylor spoke to a large Quaker colony in Rhode Island. Here, Mrs. Murray resided as a compassionate and personally interested teacher. She agreed to become a Gideonite and arrived on St. Helena Island, June 8, 1862. As one of the co-founders of Penn School, Ellen Murray's long years of service to the island community have never been forgotten. She died of yellow fever at her residence at the Oaks Plantation on January 19, 1908. The people of St. Helena Island erected a monument in her honor on the historic grounds of Penn Center actually just across the way at Big Baptist Church in the cemetery in Lights and We are so grateful for the families of the Sumter and Victoria Smalls for our history lesson and a tribute to our founders. Come on, give them another round of applause. We're going to call um, Ms. Gardenia White back, um, Simmons White, who will speak on the laying of the memorial flowers and uh, lead us in the St. Helena hymn, which is in your songbook on the back. But I don't mind because uh, Ken is my alumni and I love it and whatever I will do, I'll do for Ken. Now you heard the, um, the, the, the short bio of Lord Town, Ellen Murray, and Sean Thornton. In previous years, we even had this uh, program in Brick Baptist Church. What has happened is, um, you know, when you gather on the grounds here, a lot of people stay over here and they don't go into the church to, you know, to see the church and to get this beautiful program. So we have decided in the last couple of years to have it out here so we can get more people to understand and learn about Penn's history. On that note, when we were in Brick Church after the, the, um, the opening ceremony, we would go to the grave, the, the, the monument of Laura Town and Ellen Murray, which is over at the Brick Church. And we will identify them by the flowers that's placed on, the, on their site. Also, Charlotte Horton, you will see her flowers at the foot of this church in the back. So you will know this is where Charlotte Horton's monument is, uh, uh, um, the headstone for her. And also, just walk those sacred grounds of Brick Baptist Church. Now, Brick Baptist Church played an important role in Penn School because it was the second site of Penn School. The first was Oaks Plantation House. And when the students, I knew that because they were so thirsty for education, they moved to Brick Church. So that's why Brick Church is a, is a part of this National Historic District. So if you get a chance, go over to the Brick Church and you'll see those two monuments here and read the inscriptions on them. They're facing, not pardon, they're facing the, the road. So just go around and look at it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if you recall, when we sang the Penn School song, it describes this island in those days. So the St. Helena hymn is, it was very dear to Charlotte Horton. And if you look at the words and read the words, you will see how important, how it is instilled 
in our hearts. So I'm going to read. I, I lost my voice before, before the altar fire. The 